Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. Now, winter sports are extremely popular here in Germany and that popularity translated into a hugely successful showing at the recent Winter Olympics in Vancouver, where Germany came second in the overall medals table, picking up no fewer than 10 golds. And among the winners was our guest today, Catherine Bacherod. Catherine, thank you very, very much for joining us today on Talking Germany. Catherine, where is it? Where's what? Where's what? Where's the medal? Yeah, it's um, at my mother's home. She has to show it to all the guys who want to see it. Oh dear, I was so looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, oh. you, have to, uh, you have to have told me. Ah, I maybe didn't I'll, know that. Maybe I'll pop round one afternoon to your mother's house <laughs> and see it. Yeah, they're lovely medals. Listen, tell me, there's, we're going to have some of the viewers here. I've told them a little bit about your sport, about what you do. You describe it for yourself. What, 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 what is your sport? My sport is uh, long track speed skating. Mm -hmm. Our tra track is as long as um, a track and field track, like 400 meters. And we have uh, several disciplines. It uh, reaches from 500 meters, which is the shortest distance, to so five kilometers. Mm -hmm. And these are all individual distances for ladies. And then there's also the team pursuit, where two teams start um, on one side and the ones on the other. Yeah. So you always have that top and bottom picture on the yeah. TV screen. Yeah, yeah it's like in, in cycling. Mm. And yeah, that's just six laps for about 2,400 meters. And it's a team that um, is the fastest as we win. Catherine, some, uh, some great scenes there. Just l let's talk a little bit about you actually out there on the ice. Uh, when you're going very fast indeed, what speeds do you reach? Oh, well, it can lead up to 60 kilometres per 60 hour. 60 kilometres per hour. The fastest ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think I reach 50, easy. OK, and when you're going at that speed, what's going on in your head? Are you, are you, is, is it all intuition or are you very conscious of what's going on? Are you making decisions? I have some points that I'm thinking about, but uh, yeah, we are doing it every day, so we are used to it. So. It's routine. Yeah, it's like routine. Ah, yeah. And is it routine, the three, the three women, when they're out there on the ice together, is somebody the boss? Is somebody in charge? Yeah, we, we talk um, before about the tactic and then we have a special... Um, order how to do it and um, we know who will lead which lap and who will change when and in which corner and yeah but there's not really one boss we we discuss it a, mm. as a team and then we decide what's the best do you send signals to each other when you're out there on the track is there body language going on yeah that, that's pretty difficult because um, um, the audience is very loud and mm. so in normal World Cups, it's not that way, so we can scream at each other. <laughs> you can scream at each other? Yeah. We, when we, you shout to each other and you say... Yeah, we say like, hep, when we are mm -hmm. in the back and yeah. um, they can develop more speed. And if we don't say anything, then they know they have to... And uh, we have to know that we have to go slower. Okay. And, yeah, but in Vancouver, it was not, not possible to do oh, it yeah. with... Uh, that kind of signal and because the audience was so very yeah, very yeah. noisy so we, yeah. we have to uh, rely on the coaches to okay. show us yeah. when you talk about vancouver the final was extremely exciting it was a very very close thing but let's talk about the semi-final yeah yeah tell me what happened there what happened um like annie friesinger is mm -hmm. like one of the biggest stars in german speed skating a mega star yeah, yeah. and she got some problems she had some technical problems and lost yeah. the contact to the group. Oh, we've got the pictures and coming then, up. There you are, Catherine. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the end, sh she fell. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to move with our foot as first over the finish line. And so she had to turn um, to have her foot in front. Because the, 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 the timing chip that they actually get the time on yeah. is in the front, is in the boot, the transponder. The transponder is yeah. um, here. What is it? Right in the ankle. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. Or on the laces. No, it's um, on the, f the ankle. OK, it was pretty spectacular. That's how yeah. you got into the final. That was where you got your... Yeah, yeah? It, was, it was one part. We talked the evening before, we talked about it, and mm -hmm. Annie had um, a very bad um, knee injury, and she said, oh, like 80%, I can't skate like 
two races in one day because um, there's all, a lot of liquid in her knee after okay. after a race and then she can't move properly. So I knew I will skate the final maybe or as and a what, what, How did you feel at that moment? Yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah, yeah it, was it was a big deal. It was bad for her, but it was big for you. But, <laughs> you know, um, the A final where it um, went to get gold or silver, it was more easy to skate the B final where you, you have bronze or nothing. So I, I, I knew we have a medal for sure and mm. we just had to turn it into the right colour. Okay. It was the easier <laughs> part. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Well, well, well. Uh, you, you were enjoying that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's nice to see it. Would you do it? Uh, I don't think so. I would have to practice a lot. But you were saying that we, it should be allowed that they should be able to push each other and shove each other. No, no. Yeah. I said that in, uh, in the Olympics there's a she cross yeah. and they are, they are allowed. But here okay. it's too dangerous because mm -hmm. of the blades. They are so sharp. Are, are you... Uh, th blades. Let's talk about blades. <laughs> yeah, you've been telling me a, a little bit about your blades. Yeah. yeah? Tell me how that, you know, how they get onto your foot. They're customised. Yeah, um, the shoe is customised and they make um, a print of it and then they build the shoe around it. So it just fits me and it's pretty hard to find a second one that's like the same. Yeah, and the blades are like the same. Everybody has some, yeah, needs a special setup mm -hmm. and there's like a base model for the blades and then the, the guys from the technique shield from the technical stuff, yeah. they customise it so that it works good for me. It's amazing how naive people like I are. <laughs> I, I, th you know, I just thought you went and got an, a common, an ordinary boot and put it on and went out yeah, there. When yeah. you are a child, it's, <laughs> it's like that. But when you become more professional, then you need also more sure. professional setup. We, we were talking about the crash in the semi-final there. Do you ever crash? We were, yeah, we were looking course. at that dangerous sport there. Is your sport dangerous? Yeah, we don't have a lot of serious injuries, but... We have, of course, crashes. Okay. Uh, yeah. And you've got, there's a cushion down the side to protect yeah. you. Okay. Um, let's go back to the Vancouver Games. Just to, talking about danger, there was a shadow over the Vancouver Games. Yeah. yeah. The Georgian Luge guy, yeah, who lost his life. Yeah. Where were you when you heard that news and what impact did it have yeah. on you? I, I've seen it on TV and I was like speechless. I didn't know what, what to think about it because, yeah, there's one, one member of the Olympic family who died and... Yeah, it should be such uh, peaceful and, yeah, it should be peaceful and you should have fun mm. and you should be happy and then somebody dies, it's, it's strange. Did yeah. you identify with him as a fellow athlete? Yeah, he, he was like, like one of us, also I didn't know him in person, but, sure. yeah. Okay, on a happier note, when you were on the, when you were on the podium, yeah. And you were picking up your gold medal, and the German flag was going up. Yeah, I looked a little bit serious. Huh? Did you look very serious? What, yeah. Were you thinking of your uh, of Germany? Were you thinking of yourself, or were you thinking of your mother? Uh, I I was <laughs> thinking about, oh, what the hell I'm doing here? I don't know what, what to do. Uh, where shall really? I, yeah, where shall I look? Shall I sing the anthem or not? And yeah, I was like standing in front of the others, so I couldn't look at what, what they are doing uh -huh. because they are maybe more used to the situation. <laughs> you were looking for a lead, yeah? Yeah, I was like, it was uh, overkill on information and I didn't know what to do and where to look. Just tell our audience in two words what you are wearing. I'm wearing? Yeah, this... Uh... Yeah, that's a uh, part of the clothes from the Bundeswehr. Can you march? Of course. Of course. Uh, that's, yeah? that's, like easy. Proper, that's the easy bit. Yeah, because um, in speed skating, we are also um, skating behind each other and have to have the same step. Ah, so so marching is easy. Yeah. Okay, so you can march. Can you, uh, can you shoot? Yeah. You can shoot? Yeah. Yeah? You c can you get up at five o'clock in the morning and carry 15 kilos, 15 kilometres? Yeah, of course. Have you done that? Yeah, I think we've done more kilometres. Mm -hmm. Maybe in, we also did it at night, so really? not in the morning, yeah. So it's, it's, it's serious, yeah? This it's, is real soldiering. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and the Bundeswehr, they, they, they pay you 
a monthly wage. They look after you so that you can get on with your sport. Yeah. Yeah. I have to do like the army camps, like five mm -hmm. in my whole army career. You've got another one coming up quite soon. Yeah. Yeah. And the rest of the time, um, I have to do my sports. My job is to do the sports. Do they pay you more for the medals you win? No. They don't? No. That's not very good, if that's part of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah but um, I'm equal like other soldiers, so I don't get more money just because I have a medal. Uh, I just yeah. get um, mm -hmm. yes, a formal acknowledgement of my performance, mm -hmm. and that's the only thing. OK. Change of uh, theme. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Oh, I didn't have bread. <laughs> You didn't have any no, bread? No, I had You're some. anticipating that we're going to talk about bread. You know we're going to talk about bread, don't yeah. you? Yeah. You're a big fan of bread. Yeah, but I like it more um, for dinner. For in, dinner? In the evening. In the yeah. evening? Yeah. These Germans, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not just Catherine. Germans in general, I can tell you, they take their bread very seriously indeed. Let's have a look. When it comes to different types of bread, no country tops Germany. There are at least 300 varieties here, a fact appreciated by top chefs like Sarah Wiener in Berlin. I think it's great. There's nothing better than fresh bread. There are around 15,000 bakeries in Germany. At one of them, Brot Erbergauers in Hanover, all the loaves are still made by hand. Master baker Jochen Gauss is making barley bread, a regional speciality using sourdough. Brushed with water, the loaves are flame grilled before baking. This makes the bread especially crusty. An unusual twist on the humble loaf, one with cabbage and bacon. This is Savoy cabbage. There's a layer of fresh garlic and pork belly on it. That's how bakers used to bake their bread in the old days, to protect the base of the loaf from dirt in a directly heated oven when they were sweeping out the coals and pushing in the loaves so that they didn't turn black underneath. Instead, the leaves of cabbage would go black and be removed after baking. The garlic is our own addition. The loaves are then placed in the clay oven, directly on the hot oven plate, until they're nicely baked. The crust of the bread has a very distinct smell. Ah, the smell is unique. He and his nine colleagues make at least 100,000 loaves of bread every day, delivering them to top chefs across Germany. Clients also include federal president Horst Kuhler at Berlin's Bellevue Palace and the luxury hotel Adlon, where the Spanish king once tried them. It is said that Hollywood star Bruce Willis even took a loaf home with him. Sarah Vina serves Gower's bread in her restaurants. If anyone ever said to me I could only eat one thing for the rest of my life, I would probably say bread and butter. In fact, most Germans would probably say exactly the same thing. German bread. Yeah. is very hard. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I don't like the soft and fluffy bread. Oh, you're such a German, yeah? yeah. Um, it's hard to cut. No, you just need the right German knife. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to chew. No, it isn't. <laughs> it should be fresh. But <laughs> it gets very dry very quickly. No. <laughs> It depends on what you put on the bread. Yeah? Yeah. You're putting up a very good battle for, uh, for German bread. Yeah. Um, diet. Diet. Is a serious matter for you? Yeah, not, it's, it's, it's kind of important because uh, it depends. We are working with our body, so we have to take care about our health. And, mm -hmm. and it, yeah, nutrition is um, important for this. That sounds a little bit sort of half-hearted, you know, when I talk to, you know, uh, you talk yeah. to a professional footballer these days and they say everything has changed in the last years. Suddenly now, diet is 30% of your performance. Yeah, we know uh, what we have to eat um, before, during and after competition and that's mm -hmm. very important. Yeah. Because sometimes you need more carbohydrates and sometimes yeah. you need more proteins and we get some, um, yeah. 
reports for this. Okay. We get advised yeah. how to do this. Yeah. That. So you've got a pretty clear image of what's going on there. Yeah. Yeah, I know what I should eat, but sometimes I just need some other food. Chocolate. Yeah. You're a First. chocolate fiend, I have heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I don't. I'm not allowed to eat as much much chocolate as I want. I have to do like, okay, like, you did a very good training, so. You're a good so girl. So you reward yourself yeah. with a little piece of chocolate yeah. or a bar of chocolate? It depends on how good I was. <laughs> really? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about uh, food, yeah? And I would like to ask you, how hungry are you? How hungry are you for further success? Yeah, of course. Um, um, I gain the best you can reach as an athlete. But I want to show that it's just not a one-day ah, success. Ah. I want to show that I really earned it and it's not just coincidence that I got it. You, so. you're, you're 28 years old. Yeah. When, when, is, when, when in ice skating is, you know, when is the age where you're beginning to think, I'm past my best? Yeah, there's no, no special age. We have some older women skating some were around the 30 years and we also have like the Czech girl Martina Saplikova or the German mm. Stephanie Beckert who are around 21 so there's no special age but I think um, you develop from year to year and normally you get better from so year to year. So you're aiming for Sochi in four years time? Yeah. Next Winter Olympics? Yeah. Gold? That's, that's what you think about when you're falling asleep at night. You've had your chocolate and you've done your training. <laughs> no, in the moment I'm just thinking, oh, relax. <laughs> <laughs> she's, having, she, she's in a bit of a burnout phase at the moment. She was telling me before the show, um, uh, all the pressure, and she got a bit tired. And um, yeah, I'm pe Details of what we were talking about before the show. I'm penning a blog about Catherine, which you'll find on the Talking Germany website. Check it out. If you're into Talking Germany, you can find out more on the internet. Your host, Peter Craven, is keeping a blog on the many shows and guests in the series. Find out more about what happens behind the scenes, gossip, experiences, how the whole show is put together. Just visit blog.dw-world.de slash Talking Germany. And you can tell us what you think about the program there, too. Time for our Talking Germany quiz at the end of the show. It's a tradition we have. I give you two questions, you give me an answer. Yeah. Uh, what do you prefer, Catherine? Racing on your own or racing as part of a team? Yeah, it both has advantages, but I like more skating alone. Okay. Um, where would you prefer to live? Vancouver, Canada. You were telling me about the hospitality yeah. of the city. Or Berlin, Germany, your That's hometown. No, no question, Berlin. <laughs> You're an East Berliner, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah? But I'm a born Berliner, that's important. You're born in Berlin, born yeah. and bred in Berlin. Yeah, I'm a, a really Berliner. Okay. Um, hard, brown, chewy, German bread, or lovely, crisp, white, French baguette? Bread, German, <laughs> hard, brown bread. <laughs> You're a real patriot, aren't you? Yeah. Um, skating or soldering? Skating. <laughs> skating. Yeah, without a doubt. And tell me this, this is the big question. You've been telling me about your ambitions, about your hunger for success, yeah? Was this your last gold medal or is this only going to be your first gold medal? Well, that's a hard question. It's a hard question. I hope it's the first. Okay. Let me ask you one more question. If there are youngsters watching the show, should they get involved in your sport? Yes, of course, because um, the training is not every day is the same because we just do a lot of dryland training like we weights cycling and stuff and cool. inline skating that was a yes that was a big yes from the golden girl Catherine Macharot she's been a good guest on Talking Germany if you've enjoyed her company as much as I have do come back next week just 